guys, welcome to another tutorial here. It's Gary here for GemVFX and today we're talking about lattice deformers. Now, I'm a long time Maya user. I'm a big fan of Maya. Let's not get it wrong, not, not you know, not going to deny it. It's a very good tool. Uh, but as I'm using more and more of Blender and as I'm realizing the things that seem to be able to do in that, there are occasionally things where I go, yeah, that's good, but it's not as good as Maya's. Oh, that's, that's not as good, but Maya, Maya does this. It's so much easier to apply a lattice deformer in Maya, but after what essentially is a slightly more difficult way of applying it to the object, it suddenly allows you to do so much more. Anyway, less of me talking about it, let's get to doing it. So here we are, we're in our default scene, and I've got the default cube. I'm going to pick that default cube, I'm going to go to edit mode, and I am going to go GZ1 and press enter. So it just shifts it all up to the bottom. Let's come out of tab mode. Now, what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to start by adding on the skin modifier that we talked about in the last one. I'm going to stick that on there. And this is something I actually should have mentioned in the last one. But again, it's all about that was all about prototyping and creating a skin around vertices and edges. Of course, you can apply it to any object, so you can get like a cage. Um, and of course, because you can use F to say combine and create a new edge between two vertices, it's very simple to make some sort of like structure like something like you know proper up there kind of structure so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to very quickly i'm going to i've got the skin on that i'm going to go to edit mode so i've got all the faces all the edges selected sorry and the vertices i'm going to go control a and i'm going to bring this in and that sort of like pops them all i'm just going to click on quickly uh, up the branch smoothing so it's a little bit smaller on the edges i'm going to take the top face and let's go EZ, move that up. I did say it, yeah. Let's go E and just up and E and up. Let's pull out a little bit. E and up and E and up. So the oops. <laughs> e and up. So they're all differently spaced, but they are kind of towerish, as it were. So I'm going to take uh, so these two vertices, let's just go to vertex mode, select that one and that one, and go F, so we get a bit of a line there, that one, that one, and press F. So it's kind of got a little bit of extra structure just at the bottom, almost like it's kind of like a fireman's escape thing. And I'm going to go back to object mode, there we are. Now, so we just kind of got our sort of cagey sort of thing. Because you can do some very simple sort of deformations like you can do in, in Maya, where you make an alteration to the points that exist uh, and rather than sort of like doing a proportional scale by taking the top ones and going e -e 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 and scaling it up uh, the proportional scale area, you can actually add a lattice over the top and do it with that and then delete your history or at least delete or well, at least apply that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a lattice. I'm not going to even think about being on this object at the moment. So I'm going to go object, I'm going to create a lattice. And you can see it there at the bottom and it's just quite neatly there as it would be. I'm just going to very quickly in the object add, I'm just going to scale this up so it's outside of the object slightly. And then let's lift it up. And I'm going to pop it in the middle. And the reason for that is because you don't edit the shape of your lattice in edit mode. So I'm going to go in to press N and I'm going to do a Z scale on this. And I want to get it so it's just over the top of my box. And then I'll lift it up ever so slightly. And in theory, if I look at that now, there you go. That's that's fine. That's going nicely around my little object. So let's have a quick look at this lattice object. And if we click see here, we've got like a little anywhere else when you've got any other object, you just have polygon information and so on. But this is a lattice, so therefore it doesn't have that, but it has lattice information. So what we've got here is resolution, which essentially is, it's like subdivisioning. So we've got U, which is essentially, if I do this, that is the X axis. We have V, which is the Y axis. If I put this one to three, you'll see one appear that way. And W, which is our Z axis. So we can put this up and you can see it's generating quite a lot of cage information there, which essentially, if we go back to edit mode, now these are animatable vertices, you can move them around. Let's go back to object mode and I'm going to leave it with, in fact what I'll do is I will just put one across the middle so you can see what I mean because it'll show you what I mean with some of these bits I'm going to talk about now. 
the interpolation here at the moment on the UV and the W independent, and they're in, this is wonderful, but this is something which you cannot do in Maya. Um, the, the, the interpolation of how the points actually move can be edited per actual dimension. So if I check decide I want everything in the U to be linear, if I move this one up here, it'll move the top of the cage and everything below will go a straight line down to the next one. Uh, in the V, you can again, you've got linear as well, and but if it, B spline is what you have it on at the minute, but we've got linear. Say I change that one to cardinal. Cardinal basically says, right, okay, so I've got an animation move, so I'll move these over to here, or I've got just a, just a manipulation move, I'll move these ones over to here. I'll show you very shortly. The weight of the curve that goes out will bend back in before it resolves down there. So you're actually getting what is essentially a cardinal curve. It's very, very clever. And then you've got a Catmull ROM, which is uh, more of a subdivisional. So it's it kind of does a nice, tries to get as smooth as possible between the two. And then you've obviously got the B spline, which is also very similar to smooth which is why they kind of leave those on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the motions now of connecting the lattice to the object. So you've taken your lattice, you've scaled it up in logic mode. I'll pick my object here and I go, right, well, there's my skin modifier. Let's pop that away. I'm going to add, where is it? There we go. Sorry, the lattice deformer to that. Well, I haven't. I haven't done anything. If I move that lattice, it's not going to move the object. I've just basically put a lattice modifier on, on in the scene. So I need this lattice modifier to point onto our object. So here we go, the object is the lattice and the strength is one and we'll leave it at one. Now let's go back to our lattice. So let's pick the lattice and if you see in here we've got all of these points here and I'm going to, now what we're going to do is going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select these two points up here and I'm going to move them over here. Now as you can see because it's a lattice it's kind of interpolating along the whole thing. So I'm going to pull them out to here and you can see that these are B-spline. So I've moved these in the V direction. So if I change that, you see it doesn't change a thing. If I put, the back to, whoop, put that back to B spline, if I change this to linear, boop, it does the best it can to keep those linear. I'm going to change those to linear as well. There you go. That, that, that. So it's doing it in the height and it's doing it in that direction. So if I move it this way, you'll kind of get the same sort of thing. If I change that to linear, there you go, that's pulling everything in a very, very linear fashion. So if I change this to cardinal, and I'll change this one to cardinal, I'll change it, and you'll really see it now, change this to cardinal. Here's what happens when you pull the points. If you see the bottom, it sort of kind of, it does that sort of like compensation, trying to work out where everything's going to go. So let's move that out there, getting a kind of a, kind of a wine glass, you kind of feel there actually, even though obviously it wouldn't hold a drop of liquid. Um, and then we can say take those and just scale those out. So we have this kind of vaguely funnelish effect. That's a, that's a little bit out of shape. And then if I just very quickly change this to Catmull Rom and Catmull Rom and Catmull Rom, there you go. It's still it's it's kind of, it's doing a subdivision surface basically of the object, even though it's not. But it's kind of using the cage as the guide for what would be the subdivision angle. Obviously, you can animate these as well. You can store, you can insert keyframes in them. Ah, no, you can't. There's the problem. Because you can't animate things in edit mode. So how do we get around moving these about? Now, this is where it becomes really quite clever. Because the lattice itself also, essentially, allows you to generate what you do in Maya, which is say, I'll take these points and I'll add a cluster to them. So you can actually do that by just generating a vertex group. So I'm just going to pop this back in history until we get to a point where it doesn't look any more like a wine glass. And get that to, there we go. Come on, almost there. Oh, just run out of undos. That happens to me so often. So let's just take that back to there. Let's just check point, 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 minus point minus 0.5 and let's just do this one here and that is also minus 0.5 there we go so there's our points all back where they were and i'm now going to create a couple of basically vertex groups so let's take those four there and i'm going to click here and i'm going to go top verts okay and I'm going to assign those to that. And you can see straight away it's got them because the weight is shown. The weight on those is one. The weight on all the others is zero. I'm going to select these ones here. 
I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this midverts. And I'm going to assign those. And there you go. You'll see those. So if I top verts and I select those, and then I go middle verts and I select those, you see you can see they're there. They're also now they're no now notice that they're all selected, and I can just deselect them all. And I can go midverts deselect, and the bottom ones. Let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to create botverts, botverts. Oh no, capital letter. Let's put it in botverts, and I'm going to assign those bottom ones. There you go. And that's all that they're all doing exactly what they need to do. So that essentially is the same way as creating clusters in Maya. So let's now leave those all. In fact, I'm going to change every single one of these to cardinal because I absolutely love the care shape that cardinal makes. And I'm going to leave those there. And I'm going to go back to object mode and I'm going to create. You'll notice that we can still see all those bits there, but we can't we can't we can use them now. We've got access to them. We don't actually have to have a cluster cluttering up the place. Sorry, Maya. Um, so I'm going to basically go to object mode. I'm going to create a little. I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to. I was going. To, I was going to use a cube, but you know what? I'm not. I'm going to use a UV sphere, and I'm going to take this down to six. I'm going to take this down to three. So we've got a little capsule, and I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm all of everything selected by default. So I'm going to scale those in. Uh, I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this one null underscore bot. So I'm kind of keeping to a naming convention. It also means it'll all stay in the same place when I make these. So let's go Shift D, and I'll move that up to the Z. And I'm going to that null bot. I'm going to call null mid. Rename that. And Shift D, move it only up the Z. And I'm going to call that null underscore underscore top. What I need to do now is I need to make sure that I can have a hook, some way of hooking these group vertices, top verts, for example, to the object. Well, that is in the modifiers. So I'm going to go hook here. Now the object is the object I want to hook it to is null top, and the vertex we want to do is top verts. So that's interesting. You'll notice a little line has appeared. So top verts are now hooked to that one there. So if I move that, look at that, it's moving the top ones. Not only that, if I put an S on that and scale it, it scales them. And also, if I press R, I can rotate them. So I've now got an object which drives all of those parts of that lattice. So let's do the same thing again. So on the lattice, we'll add another hook modifier. And this one will be using null mid. And the vertex group will be the midverts. Uh, before I even bother coming out of this, I'm going to do the same with the bottom. So we're going to say null bot is going to move the botverts. There you go. So now what we have here is our lovely objects. And I will just move that light up there, out the way. And let's just shift that. In fact, let's just delete those. Don't need that. Don't need that. So what we now have is something which we can animate. So let's go into the animation tab. Let's just put this down here. And they're just basically a couple of perspective views now because there's no camera, so it's not showing the camera view. And so if I basically quickly press not N T, sorry, so I can then get the manipulators. And if I move this around, you can see it's moving that one. We get the mid one, move that around, it's moving the mid section. And you've got that lovely bowing that you get with the cardinal curves, which is great. And then we have the null bot. Got ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And then what we can do also, which is the most important thing here, because we've got control for this, we've basically got essentially what is a squashy, squeezy box rig, which is quite nice. I'm going to very quickly add in here a cylinder. There we go. And let's go into here and let's change the radius up and let's take the depth and bring that all the way down. And leave the and let's bring the verts. Let's take them down to something a bit smaller. Like, oh, six is fine. And then let's go into this object's visibility. Yep, there you go. And viewport display. I'm going to set that to wireframe, turn off shadow, and display as wire. So this is now just an object, a little wire object. And we'll just call this anim root. So let's go into the modify, let's go into, sorry, the uh, constr object constraint. Pick null bot. And I'm going to set this to be the child of. 
and I'm going to set this to the male child of the anim root. And that one do the same thing to be the child of the anim root. And null top to be the child of anim root. So now if I pick this and move this around, it moves around everything. You can see this connectivity by the little lines and the little black dot. But what that means is I can do whee! So I can basically do kind of like a jumping animation here. Or consequently, I can, and then when I'm doing that, I can also then do a move up here. What I can also do, of course, is I can do a squash. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a squash down, and then I jump into the air and then back down again. Move this here. It's a little bit rubbish, but so what you've got there is the lattice is controlling the main shape. Those three polygon objects, the null objects that I've just called, those are the animation shapes. So they animate the lattice, and then the top object, the anima root, is what everything else is connected to. Potentially, what essentially what you've got there is a box rig. So what you can do is you can have the base rig. And then you can go in there and you can replace the object inside. It doesn't have to be that little cage. It could be anything. So now what we've got is something which is, um, you know, completely and utterly controlled by the rig. It's great. It's great. Look at that. The other thing which you can do, which I'll also keep in mind, you should also keep in mind, is you can create uh, the vertex groups as we have done for the lattice. And then what you can do, and this is the clever thing, is you can rig those to be connected to bone joints. So you can actually use them, use the constraints, the child constraints to say these vertices, this vertex group of this lattice are connected to this particular joint. So you can actually get lots and lots of wonderful things going on. It's, um, it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, tool used very, very well. But I just love the fact that you get these lovely shapes. Now that actually could, you see you've got the nice bowing there going on. It's great if we change it to the B spline. You can just adjust this as you want. So this is now a B spline jump. Or you can make them all linear. I mean, you don't have to do them all linear, obviously. So now you get it, it feels a lot more metallic. It feels a lot more like it's a piece of a metal structure that's jumping. Right, I'm going to stop there, everybody, because I know what I'm like and uh, I can keep on going forever. But for now, there you go. That's how you use a lattice, or at least it's one of the ways of using a lattice. And uh, I hope this has been of some use to you. If, um, if you want any more information or there's something in particular that you like the look of that you want to know more about, please drop me a line. Let me know. I'm more than happy to look into anything because if it helps you, it probably helps me as well. And that's the good side. For me, that's the great side. Uh, so listen, guys, you go off and do whatever you've got to do. Get your head into Blender. Use it more and more. It's fabulous. It's great and it's free. You can't knock it. Um, I, I think it's brilliant. So in the meantime, stay safe. That's all I really want you to do as well, is stay safe. Um, it's been great having you guys. Thank you for watching this all the way to the end. Uh, take care. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends. Get them to subscribe. That'd be ace. Right, look after yourselves, guys. Take care. Bye.